Mrs. Moore, may I have a word with you in private? Dr. Hayes's grave tone sent a chill down my spine. Leon squeezed my hand, his eyes filled with confusion and a hint of worry. Is everything all right, doctor? I asked, my heart pounding. Please, it will only take a moment. I must discuss something of importance. I glanced at Leon, who gave me a slight nod. With reluctance, I followed Dr. Hayes into his office, the door closing behind us with an ominous thud. What's this about? I demanded once we were alone. Dr. Hayes looked me straight in the eyes. Mrs. Moore, you need to know the truth about your husband. My breath caught in my throat as he continued. Leon has a history of fraudulent behavior and has served time for financial crimes. I'm deeply concerned that his current issues might be fabricated to cover up something far more nefarious. The room started spinning. Leon, a criminal? It couldn't be true. We'd been married for twenty years. Surely I would have known. That's... that's impossible, I stammered. Leon owns a successful business. He's an upstanding member of our community. Dr. Hayes shook his head solemnly. I understand this is difficult to accept, but I have evidence dating back over a decade. Multiple counts of fraud, embezzlement, even a stint in prison that he's clearly kept from you. My mind raced, memories flashing of unexplained late nights and secrecy over his financial dealings. Had it all been an elaborate facade? Why are you telling me this? My voice trembled with a mix of anger and dread. Because you deserve to know who you've really been married to, Mrs. Moore. I couldn't in good conscience allow this deception to continue. I fought back tears, clenching my fists as waves of humiliation and rage washed over me. How could Leon have lied to me for so long? My body went numb as I contemplated the depth of his betrayal. With a heavy heart, I thanked Dr. Hayes and rejoined Leon in the waiting room, my smile frozen as I struggled to process this staggering revelation. One thing was certain. From this moment on, nothing would ever be the same. The drive home was suffocating. The silence between Leon and I thick with unspoken accusations. My heart pounded in my chest as I replayed Dr. Hayes's damning words over and over. Finally, Leon cleared his throat. Cass, you know that was all nonsense, right? The ravings of a quack doctor trying to stir up trouble. I kept my eyes fixed on the road ahead, teeth clenched. Really? So you've never been arrested or in prison? Leon shifted uncomfortably in the passenger seat. Well, I... I may have had a few brushes with the law in my younger, wilder days, but that's all ancient history. You're telling me you didn't think that was something I deserved to know? I snapped, struggling to maintain my composure. Sweetheart, I was protecting you. Leon's voice took on a pleading tone. Those were mistakes from my past, stupid ones that I deeply regret. But I'm a changed man now. You know the real me. Did I, though? A gnawing doubt began to spread through my mind like a malignant growth. What if Dr. Hayes was right? What if this life of ours was built on a foundation of lies? We arrived home in stony silence. The moment the front door closed behind us, Leon enveloped me in an embrace. You have to believe me, Cass. You're my world, my everything. I could never hurt you like that. I wanted desperately to trust the man I loved. But Dr. Hayes's words kept echoing in my head, a harsh reality I could no longer ignore. I, I need some time alone to process all this, I mumbled, pulling away. Why don't you stay at your club downtown tonight? A flicker of uncertainty passed over Leon's face before he gave me a curt nod and headed out. As soon as I heard his car pull away, I sprang into action. I ransacked our home office, digging through files and searching his computer for any trace of what he'd been hiding from me. After hours of frantic digging, I struck gold. Bank statements detailing large wire transfers, an encrypted external hard drive, and a disposable cell phone filled with incriminating text messages. Clutching the damning evidence in my trembling hands, I collapsed to the floor in stunned disbelief. Dr. Hayes was right. My whole life with Leon had been a sham. Tears streamed down my face as I finally faced the cold truth. My husband, my supposed soulmate, was a liar and a criminal of the worst kind. And I was going to make him pay. The next morning, I awoke with a pounding headache and a burning determination. Leon still hadn't returned home, but I didn't care. I had work to do. First, I hired a private investigator, a no-nonsense ex-cop named Sam Wilkins. I need you to dig up everything you can on my husband, I told him flatly. Financial records, phone logs, anything shady at all. Money is no object. 
Sam gave me a knowing look. Hate to see a marriage go south like this, Mrs. Moore, but you can count on me to find the truth. Next, I made an appointment to meet with Nina Roberts, a young hotshot detective I knew from the neighborhood watch program. Leon's been lying and cheating for years, I stated bluntly as I showed her the evidence I'd uncovered. I need your help nailing this bastard. Nina's eyes went wide, but her voice remained calm and professional. This is huge, Cassidy. If even half of this is legit, we're talking RICO charges, money laundering, the works. Good, I replied stonily. That snake deserves to rot in prison forever. Over the next few weeks, the lies and depravity of Leon's secret life began unraveling at a dizzying pace. Sam turned up bank accounts scattered across the globe, all funded by fraudulent investment schemes that bilked millions from unsuspecting victims. The guy's a total psychopath, Sam told me grimly. Spent years grooming and manipulating people, lying through his teeth the whole damn time. Even worse, Nina discovered Leon had a whole other family, a son named Elliot he'd abandoned decades ago to perpetuate his conman persona. The kid's life was ruined because of that scumbag dad of his, she seethed. With every new revelation, my hatred for Leon smoldered into an unquenchable blaze of rage. This sociopath had destroyed lives without a shred of remorse, all to feed his greed and narcissism. Finally, the last damning piece fell into place, proof that Leon had been slowly siphoning money from my own research company into his tangled web of fraudulent businesses. I've got the bank transfers and everything, Nina stated grimly. He's been robbing you blind for years right under your nose. That was the final straw. I could take the lying, the cheating, even the other family. But stealing from me, jeopardizing my life's work, that was unforgivable. We need to take this monster down, I stated, fists clenched. Once and for all. Nina nodded solemnly. Don't worry, Cass. This is more than enough evidence to bury Leon for the rest of his pathetic life. He'll get what's coming to him, I promise. As I looked over the damning case files detailing Leon's sociopathic crimes, a sense of grim satisfaction washed over me. The lying bastard was finally going to pay. We've got to move fast before Leon gets spooked and tries to bolt. Nina's voice was tense as we huddled around the stack of evidence in my living room. Sam nodded grimly. Yeah, that snake's gonna slip through our fingers if we're not careful. Guys like him always have escape plans ready. Not this time, I stated with cold determination. He's not wriggling out of this web he's spun. Nina, what's our next move? The young detective's eyes burned with righteous fury. First, we get his son Elliot on our side. The kid's testimony could be our biggest weapon against that lying sack of crap. Two days later, Nina and I were sitting across from a confused, hostile young man at a downtown diner. Elliot Vance regarded us with a cautious glare as we laid out the facts about his father's depravity. So let me get this straight, he spat bitterly after we'd finished. That bastard Leon has been playing me for a fool my entire life, feeding me scraps while he lived it up scamming people? I nodded solemnly. I'm so sorry, Elliot, believe me. I had no idea the man I loved was such a vile, manipulative monster. Elliot shook his head in disbelief. And now what? You want my help bringing him down like he deserves? More than that, Nina interjected firmly. We want you to be there when it happens, when we expose Leon for the pathetic, greedy little worm he truly is. A slow smile spread across Elliot's face equal parts grim satisfaction and hatred. You know what? I'm in. That soulless prick has it coming. With Elliot as our secret ally, our plan quickly fell into place. Using the evidence we'd gathered, Nina got authorization for concealed recordings and surveillance on Leon's businesses. Once we get solid proof of his latest fraud, we can move in for the kill, she stated with grim relish. True to form, within a matter of days, Leon's phone calls and meetings were captured setting up an elaborate new Ponzi scheme that swindled millions from investors. He's accelerating the con now that he knows we're on to him, Sam warned. We need to strike soon before innocent people get burned again. I clenched my fists, a cold fury rising within me at the thought of how many lives Leon had shattered with his sociopathic greed. Don't worry, we're going to take that bastard down in front of the whole world, no more hiding in the shadows for him. For the first time in weeks, a feral grin spread across my face as the perfect scenario materialized. 
Leon's businesses were hosting a huge gala next month, an ostentatious spectacle to lure in new victims like sharks to bloody water. What better place to detonate this bomb of truth than at Leon's own ego-stroking party? I asked with grim satisfaction. Right there in the spotlight where he always wants to be, exposed as a fraud to the entire world. Nina's eyes widened. Then she nodded firmly. You're right, Cass. It's time we shoved that lying sack of crap back into the harsh light he spent his whole life running from. With my allies beside me, I stared ahead with grim determination. The stage was set. All that was left was to watch my husband's life go up in flames of his own making. You really think this is going to work? Elliot asked, eyeing me skeptically as we went over the plan one final time. That smug bastard always has an angle. I met his gaze, my jaw clenched with determination. Not this time. We've covered every possible base. Leon's not wriggling out of this. Nina nodded firmly. He's right, Elliot. Your dad's psychopathic days are done. This is a lead pipe lock. I still can't believe I'm actually working with a cop to take down my own father, Elliot muttered, running a hand through his shaggy hair. If you'd told me that a month ago, I would have thought you were insane. Believe me, I know the feeling. I stated grimly. But that man stopped being a real father a long time ago. As the gala night approached, the atmosphere was thick with tension. Sam had eyes on Leon's businesses around the clock, ensuring he didn't try to rabbit. Not that he had anywhere to go, Nina had Vavy covered. He makes one wrong move. I'll cold give the entire force to make sure his slicked running is short-lived, she stated with steely-eyed confidence. Two nights before the big event, Leon called me out of the blue in a supposed attempt to reconcile. Cass, sweetheart, this has all been a big misunderstanding, he simpered over the line. Why don't we discuss this rationally, face to face? I smirked to myself, knowing full well he was trying to catch wind of our true plans. You're right, Leon, I replied sweetly. Let's meet at my office tomorrow night, just the two of us. We can clear the air. His predictable desperation was almost pitiable. The vile scumbag had no idea what was coming. The next evening, Leon arrived at my pharmaceutical research office, right on schedule. As I greeted him with an air of false congeniality, Nina and Elliot slipped in quietly behind, staying out of sight. I'm glad you agreed to talk, Cassidy, Leon began with his usual oily charm. This ridiculous accusation is all just a big misunder. Save it, I cut him off coldly. We know everything, Leon. The fraud, the lies, all of it. Your tangled web of deceit is finally unraveling. The color drained from his face as Nina and Elliot emerged from the shadows. No, no, this can't be happening. It's over, Dad. Elliot spat with raw hatred. We have all the evidence we need to watch you rot in prison like you deserve. Leon's eyes narrowed with desperation as he turned back towards me. Cassidy, please, you have to understand. I did it all for us, for our future. I met his gaze with absolute disgust. Our future? You mean the future you jeopardized by stealing from my life's work to fund your depraved schemes? By lying to me every single day of our lives together while ruining innocent people? Shaking my head in revulsion, I turned to leave. I hope you enjoy the gala, Leon. It's going to be your last taste of that filthy spotlight you love so much. As Nina and her team slapped the cuffs on the sputtering, defiant con man, his face contorted with impotent rage. Finally, just another criminal, headed for his well-deserved downfall. And I couldn't wait to watch it happen. The night of Leon's Grand Investor's Gala arrived with the anticipation of a looming execution. I could barely contain my roiling mixture of dread and exhilaration as the venue filled with wealthy marks, all victims in waiting, for my husband's twisted con game. You really want to go through with this, Cass? Nina murmured under her breath as we observed the milling crowds from a secluded balcony. Give Leon a chance to slink away into a hole somewhere? I shook my head firmly. Absolutely not. That bastard doesn't get to escape his reckoning anymore. It's time the whole world saw him for the despicable, soulless grifter he truly is. Nina nodded grimly. Yes, ma'am, just say the word. My gaze turned towards the stage, where Leon was working the crowd with his usual oily charisma and transparent bravado. Just watching him ooze around filling people's heads with poison made my skin crawl. Suddenly, his eyes locked onto mine from across the room. A brief flicker of panic danced behind his carefully crafted mask, 
before he offered me a sickly confident smile and a mocking wink. White-hot rage blazed through me. That smug, deluded psychopath actually thought he could wriggle his way out of this. Enough was enough. Do it, I stated to Nina in a tone of finality. Take him down once and for all. Within moments, the gala sound system crackled to life, overriding the thumping music and Leon's droning speech. The voice that projected across the speakers was coldly professional and authoritative. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Detective Nina Roberts of the Los Angeles Police Department. By order of the state of California, I am legally obligated to shut down this event and have the host, Leon Vance, taken into custody. A stunned hush fell over the crowd as they turned towards the stage in shock and confusion. Even Leon seemed temporarily frozen, his mouth agape in disbelief. Leon Vance has been indicted on 47 counts of fraud, racketeering, money laundering, and grand larceny, Nina's voice continued remorselessly. This entire business endeavor was nothing but an elaborate Ponzi scheme designed to bilk innocent people out of their life savings. Screams and furious shouts of anger erupted as the crowd turned on their host. I watched Leon's face contort with rage as he realized there was no escape hatch, nowhere left to run from his well-deserved reckoning. As a full SWAT team poured into the venue, quickly surrounding Leon and cutting off any retreat, I allowed myself a grim smile of satisfaction. The master of lies was finally being exposed to the harsh light of truth. When his eyes found me in the crowd, I answered Leon's look of hatred and betrayal with a simple shake of my head. "'This is what you deserve, you depraved coward,' I murmured too softly for anyone to hear. "'For all the lives you destroyed, for the decades of mind games and con artistry.' Leon let out a strangled howl of fury and denial as the team of officers finally slapped the cuffs on his wrists and began dragging him off the stage. His legs kicked helplessly, unable to fight the inevitable tsunami of justice finally crashing over him. "'You'll never get away with this,' he screamed in a final eruption. "'You hear me, Cassidy? This isn't over. I'll destroy you all!' I simply watched with stony dispassion as the human personification of greed and deception was hauled away like so much refuse. Leon's empty threats fell on deaf ears. The only thing I felt was a profound sense of finality and relief. After so many years, the nightmare was finally over. My tormentor's grave had been dug by his own greedy hands, and he had no one to blame but himself as he was lowered into its endless darkness. The days following Leon's dramatic public downfall were a whirlwind. News of his brazen decades-long frauds spread like wildfire, making headlines across the country. How did you not know? Reporters would demand, thrusting microphones in my face outside the courthouse. This man completely deceived you for over twenty years. I simply stared back in stony silence. The truth was, I didn't have an answer that could make sense of the twisted labyrinth of lies my husband had constructed around our lives. Inside the courtroom, however, Leon was a completely different beast. His usual oily arrogance had contorted into a snarling, defiant mask of rage as the damning evidence against him was mercilessly presented. "'You're all blind, naive fools,' he erupted during one proceeding, shaking his shackled wrists violently. "'I was doing what any smart businessman does, exploring every opportunity and advantage. "'You'll see, none of this will stick,' Nina, seated beside me, simply shook her head in disgust." deluded till the very end, textbook case of a narcissistic sociopath unable to accept reality. Elliot turned away, unable to even look at the raging, unhinged figure that had given him life. "'How could I have ever looked up to that? That thing?' he muttered, his voice thick with shame and revulsion. Leon's tantrum was short-lived, however, as the judge quickly ruled him out of order, and the proceedings continued with an inexorable momentum towards his conviction." A parade of witnesses took the stand. Former investors made destitute, employees forced to cover up illicit money trails, even mistresses testifying to the dark depravities fueling Leon's ego. Your husband is quite simply one of the most deplorable, soulless con artists I've ever encountered, the prosecutor stated grimly after delivering his closing arguments. A total lack of conscience or remorse. The public needs to be protected from such a uniquely dangerous psychopath. I sat motionless, letting the deluge of sordid revelations about the man I had once sworn eternity to wash over me. At this point, 
There was no shred of my former love left alive, just cold, hard pragmatism about the upcoming verdict. When the jury finally returned, it took less than thirty minutes for the jury foreman to read the words I'd been waiting to hear, on all counts of fraud, embezzlement, racketeering, and money laundering, we find the defendant, Leon Michael Vance, guilty. A deafening silence fell over the courtroom for a few endless moments. Leon simply stared straight ahead, seemingly unable to process the reality crashing down upon him. Then the dam burst. With a guttural, animalistic scream of rage, he hurled himself towards the jury box, teeth gnashing as he fought against the restraints and swarm of bailiffs struggling to restrain him. This is madness, a conspiracy to silence my vision, my brilliance, he shrieked, spittle flying as his contorted face flushed beet red. You're throwing away your best chance at greatness for mediocrity. All of you, damn you. I watched the snarling, writhing spectacle with a strange sense of detachment. This raving lunatic was a far cry from the image of charisma and success Leon had so carefully cultivated during our marriage. As he was finally subdued and dragged from the courthouse still screaming about injustice and vengeance, I turned to share a look with Nina and Elliot. For the first time in months it felt like all our muscles could finally relax and our burdens lifted. The nightmare was over. Justice had been served, and the monster I'd married was headed to a fate dire enough to match the magnitude of his sins. The prison bus carrying Leon away disappeared over the horizon, the faint echo of his muffled curses slowly fading into nothingness. As I watched the dust settle, an immense weight seemed to lift from my shoulders. Well, I'd say justice was served, Nina remarked grimly as we turned to head back to our cars. With any luck, that's the last time any of us will have to lay eyes on that depraved sociopath. I nodded silently, still trying to process the finality of it all. For over twenty years, Leon's lies and manipulation had been an inescapable, dark cloud shadowing my life. And now, just like that, the storm was over. You doing okay? Cass? The concern in Nina's voice was genuine. I know this whole nightmare had to have been just unimaginable hell for you. I'm all right. I replied after a moment's pause. Just still wrapping my head around how to feel, I suppose. Closure doesn't come easy after being violated like that. Nina gave my arm a reassuring squeeze. For what it's worth, you showed incredible strength and perseverance through all of this. Leon got exactly what he deserved, and you get to move forward, build your life back up the right way. I managed a small smile, grateful for the unconditional support she and the others had shown me. Thank you, Nina. Truly, I couldn't have made it through this without you as my rock. As I headed back to my empty house, no longer feeling like the prison it once was, my mind drifted to thoughts of the future. What would my new normal even look like after the last two decades of calculated lies? The next few weeks passed by in a whirlwind of reorienting my life. Investments were salvaged, files and records meticulously reorganized to ferret out Leon's poisonous fingerprints. I poured myself into my research work at the lab, determined to regain my footing and sense of purpose. Dean, my longtime friend and colleague, was an invaluable support system during this time. The guy's gone for good now, Cass, he stated matter-of-factly as we shared lunch in the break room. Don't spend another second letting that parasite screw with your head. His blunt practicality was strangely comforting and grounding. You're right, it's time to look ahead. Too much of my life has already been wasted on that sociopath's mind games. As my life finally began feeling whole and stable again, I found an unexpected source of solace. Elliot, Leon's estranged son. We began meeting for regular dinners and conversations, finding solidarity in our shared trauma from his father's depravity. You know, I used to blame myself for how things went down between me and Dad. Elliot confided over beers one night. Like I just wasn't good enough or something, so he pushed me out of his life. Don't ever think that way again, I stated fiercely. Leon wasn't capable of anything resembling real love or family. That's on him and his vacuum of a soul, not you. Elliot managed a sad smile. Yeah, I'm starting to accept that now, finally. Just feels good to have someone who actually gets it, you know? As the weeks stretched into months, that first rush of liberation from Leon's stranglehold began giving way to a deeper sense of peace and renewal. 
my company was thriving, my relationships realigned on a true and honest foundation. I'd been given a second chance at life, and this time I had no intention of letting anyone or anything tarnish my journey towards healing, growth, and self-discovery ever again. The long, dark night of deception was over, and I was walking forward, bathing in the warm sunlight of authentic independence and control over my own destiny.